Jay Haynes for the Film Sensei YouTube channel. Today in this video, we are going to do part three of the Video Copilot Orb plugin effect for HitFilm Pro version 14. A couple of things I want to mention before I start. Number one is if you have not watched the first two videos on this, definitely watch the first two videos before watching this video because you will not be able to follow along this video unless you watch the first two. I have placed those in the upper right hand corner here. Also, there is a table of contents in the description. It is time stamped and so therefore it will help you to go to exactly the thing that you want to take a look at if you're only looking for one specific item in this tutorial. And lastly, it is important to understand that everything that I do in this tutorial can be tweaked, and that tweaking is up to you. It's all by choice. These just happen to be the way that I did mine, but feel free to tweak these as much as you like. So leaving off from where we were last time, I am now going to create the cloud layer that we will have surrounding the planet. To do this, I'm going to drag a new plane in above Earth, and I am going to search for and find the orb effect and drop it on that plane layer. You'll see that it is, of course, the wrong size. So if I double click on that, I can go ahead and change the radius to 450, which is the size of the Earth. Uh, now, what I'm going to do is opening up the maps, I'm going to search for and assign the diffuse layer to the Earth clouds. Um, 1k jpeg now the problem is is if i go ahead and make this say for example into a blend mode of add it sort of works but i don't have a lot of control over that so instead i'm going to leave this as a blend mode of normal and i am going to rename this clouds and the earth clouds effect what i'm going to do is turn that on for a second and i'm going to right click it and make it into its own composite shot now that it's in its own composite shot i can actually apply effects to it which will automatically translate into the orb the orb plugin the biggest effect i'm going to add will actually be a luminance key and this luminance key will essentially create a sort of alpha mat for those clouds. So if I come back over to the composite shot and I can go ahead and turn that off now, you can see if I, let me just reset the current view and selecting the orbit tool, you can see that there are some clouds here. If I come over to the earth clouds and I open up the luminance key and I drag the threshold to the left, I'm going to add more clouds. And so now if I go back into the composite shot, you can see there are a lot more clouds. If I, on the other hand, drag it to the right, uh, then, oh, sorry, wrong one. Uh, let me reset that. And if I drag this to the right, then there will be far fewer clouds. Okay, very few, in fact. So what I'm going to do is just pick a number, sort of a place that looks pretty good, maybe there. And I am liking that, right? So now I have some cloud cover, but not too much. Whoops. And selecting the orbit tool, I can sort of look around and see that those clouds. And I think that they look pretty good. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to make them look more like clouds. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is assign the bump map layer to that same clouds. And now they look very, like very bumpy clouds. I don't want them to be quite that bumpy, so I'm just going to take the bump map intensity down to about maybe yeah, there or so. Okay, that looks, that looks fairly decent, okay. I want to add a curves effect to this underneath the, the, the plugin, of course. And then I'm just going to push the brightness of it up and that will allow me to then under material take the color of it down a little bit okay so that it looks more like fluffy clouds and less like white splotches i don't need the glossiness i don't need the specularity so i'm just going to remove those uh, all i need is the diffuse and i think that that looks pretty good 
Okay, so what I want to do now is add some shadows for those clouds. To do that, what I'm going to do is duplicate the clouds plane, and I'm going to drop that underneath, and I'm going to rename that cloud shadows. Okay, now the clouds plane, what I want to do is I want to lift it off the earth a little bit. So I'm just going to increase the radius to about 460. And you can see that it's pulling it off the earth and that's too much. But I'm going to draw that back, but in a very interesting and unique way. Okay, back to the cloud shadow. And, and let me just hide the clouds for a second. What I want to do is I want to turn all of the clouds to dark, right, to black. So first of all, opening up the uh, effects, I won't need the curves on that. And I also won't need uh, the bump map so we can get rid of that. Um, that just is wasting resources. All right now what I want to do is use a tint effect. And the tint effect basically tells it uh, to assign black to a color and white to a color. Right now, black is assigned to black, white is assigned to white. But if I change the white to be assigned also to black, then it's going to create all these dark looking splotches there, right? Which will be perfect as little shadows underneath there, okay? Now, the other thing that I want to do is I want to add a blur effect. Let me hide that for just a moment because they're a little too stark. But if I add a little bit of a blur effect uh, and I can, of course, adjust that blur, then that will come off looking pretty good. Okay, so now I have this sort of, uh, you know, these dark splotches underneath the clouds that are essentially the shadows. Okay, now I said I was going to draw these uh, cl this this cloud layer back in a little bit. I am. I'm going to do that by using a under the advanced options, the edge feather and the edge shrink. So I'm just going to slide the edge feather over a little bit. You can see. And now if I slide the edge shrink over a little bit, I'm just pulling it down so that it's sitting up against the earth again. Oh, and that just looks fantastic. Let me just uh, reset that current view. Oh, yeah. And that's exactly what I want there. So now what I want to do is I want to add that atmospheric haze. So again, I'm going to drag a new plane into the composite shot, and I'm going to rename it atmospheric haze and I'm going to find the orb effect and I will drop it again onto uh, the atmospheric haze plane just like I did before again opening this up I'm going to set it to 450 pixels wide and I'm going to open up the materials and I don't need the diffuse I don't need the glossiness and I don't need the specularity. What I do want is the illumination. So I'm going to crank up, whoops, the illumination. We'll just crank it up to one. And I'm going to change the color of this to sort of a light blue this way. Okay. Now what I want to do is actually I'm going to knock that down just a little bit, maybe yeah, about there. Okay. Doesn't have to be quite that much. All right, under the illumination options, we're going to bring the Fresnel, and this is called, or is pronounced Fresnel, by the way, it's not Fresnel, which is what I pronounced it last time I was corrected. So I'm going to bring the Fresnel all the way up to one, and then I'm going to bring the Fresnel bias down to zero. And this is going to sort of start pushing things, but when I actually change the shadow light out, it will push it to the edge. And then if I just adjust the shadow light contrast, I can get it to exactly where I want it to be. And then the expansion, I can draw back so that I had this lovely looking edge right here. Okay. Now, if I were to right click on this and say, make this into a screen blend mode, now I have that blue atmospheric haze that I'm looking for. The next thing I want to do is I want to get that sort of glow going around the edge. The way that I'm going to do that is by duplicating the atmospheric haze. And then under the orb effect, I'm going to make a couple of changes. 
I'm going to open up Illumination Options, and I'm going to bring the Fresnel bias all the way up to 10, and I'm going to bring the Illumination amount all the way up to about 50 or so. Okay, so now I just have this edge here. Doesn't that look nice? Now, to really finish this off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple of glow effects to it. Dragging a glow effect on here, I can open this up and maybe set that to say two with a uh, radius of about 100, and that looks pretty good. And then if I duplicate that, and I maybe take that down to one with a radius of 200, then yeah, see how that looks? That's the look that I'm going for on the edge here okay now if i want i can always tweak that a little bit the other thing that i can do especially on the first atmospheric haze is i can bring in a little bit of the diffuse so i might um color it the same color but then just bring it over and this will just give a little more blue into the planet itself so making that look a little bit more bluish as it were as I'm looking at this, I think maybe I want to take the glow of the first one down just a little bit. Yeah, I don't want it to be too much there, right? So, you know, you can kind of tweak that a little bit to exactly what you're what you're liking. All right, let's talk about how to make um, a, that blue haze that you want to have. Uh, there is a file called Blue Haze. I'm going to turn that on, and I'm just going to lift that above everything. And I'm going to right-click on that and change the blend mode to screen. So now I just have this. If I toggle it on and off, you can see that I just have this sort of a blue haze that's here. Okay, let's talk about how to create the sun itself. Now, we already have our light in the scene. And selecting the Earth, if I were to rotate this scene a little bit, you would see that the sun is sitting, oh, not quite, maybe just a little bit more. It's sitting right there. There it is, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and drag in one more new plane, and I'm going to right-click on that and change the blend mode to add. And actually, I think I'll put it below the blue haze. And I'm just going to call this Sun Flare. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a light flare effect and drop that light flare onto the Sun Flare. Um, and then instead of having the hotspot position be negative 300, negative 300, I'm going to make that zero and zero. And I'm going to use the sun point. So there it is. And now if I um, rotate this a little bit, you can see. Now the problem is, is that it's sitting above that. And so even if it goes behind the earth, it's still there, right? We'll fix that in a second. First thing I would like to do is I would like to change the flare to look more like our sun. So I'm going to come down here and use spiked orange, which doesn't look a lot like our sun. But if I were to take the rays of that and knock them down to nothing, okay, and then up the intensity a little bit and maybe take down the, yeah, something like that, maybe just a little bit more. Okay, so I want it to look like our sun. Now you can use any any kind of a, a thing you want, right? But what we're going to do is we're going to turn off the lens flare, okay? Now, if you're happy with how that looks, then you can be done right here, okay? And if I rotate this, you can see that it actually goes behind, or sorry, all I have to do is move it behind the, um, the earth. But what if I want those flares? All right, well, here's what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create, I'm going to drag in a new uh, plane and I'm going to put it on the very bottom. And to that plane, I'm going to add the orb effect again so that it is identical to uh, the one that I have. I'm going to make it 450. All right. And above that plane, I'm going to place a gray layer. And I'm going to call that the sun matte layer, okay? 
Now, if I come up here to the to the uh, sun flare, and under the light flare, I place a set matte effect on it, I can go ahead and source that sun matte grade layer. Okay, and if I change the bl the uh, blend mode of that to subtract, then you'll see that as I rotate, it goes behind the earth okay but now how do i get the lens flare what i'm going to do now is i'm going to cheat and i'm going to add an auto light flare to or an auto light flare there it is to the plane which is going to automatically create a lens flare right and now if i rotate it behind the earth that lens flare will go away as the light flare goes behind the earth and it comes back out. Now, if I want that to match the one that I have now, I can do that. So I can actually use, say, for example, the spiked orange. And again, I can go ahead and um, remove the rays, right? And I can just use the, uh, the lens flare from that, right? And so now... I have a very realistic looking light flare that's happening here anytime that the sun comes into the camera frame. Now, there's one little thing I'm noticing that since I've added all these other effects, my lights are a little bit dim. So that's okay. All I have to do is just go back uh, to the original Earth plane under the orb and under the materials, under the illumination color, I can just increase the illumination a little bit so that they are a little bit brighter here in terms of the uh, lights on the dark side of the planet. So basically, in a nutshell, that is the complete way of creating the planet Earth using the video copilot orb effect. So if you like this kind of content, please do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, click the little bell icon for notification. Feel free to like this video, share it with your friends. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.